So uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Katie Carpenter and I'll be co-chairing today's events alongside Francis and trying to make sure everything is as slick as possible uh, for all of you attending. Um, my background in e-commerce started 12 years ago um, at Procter & Gamble, where up until two years ago, I was heading up the UK pure play business on retailers with Ocado and Amazon um, on brands such as Oral-B and Braun over on the electronic side, um, and then in, within FMCG on Pampers, Ariel, Ferry. Um, then this year, as the uh, pandemic really started hitting the globe, I took a new opportunity to work on a global business with a Scottish family-run company called William Grant, uh, where I head up our commercial side of the business, looking at how we evolve, um, predominantly with retailers like Amazon, um, and and watching kind of all of the trends that we see coming through in a new, very new trading world um, in COVID for, for e-commerce. Um, I'll now hand you over to Francis, who will tell you a little bit about himself um, and set up the introduction for today's events. Thanks, Katie. So I'm Francis. Unfortunately, as another p and and I've worked on a lot of the same brands and a lot of the same customers. Uh, but more latterly, I'm the digital director at a company called Nomad Foods. And we, we always joke that who's Nomad Foods? But we're actually a top 20 FMCG in Europe and we own a lot of your favourite frozen brands. Bird's Eye, Goodfellas, Aunt Bessie's, uh, Finders, Iglo. Uh, I, I've been heavily involved with uh, with e-commerce, with, with pure plays, with startups, uh, with bricks and clicks across Europe for uh, quite a long time now. Let's put it that way. So I'm just going to tee off the day and um, just to walk you through a little bit about what's been going on. Now, clearly, we were all hoping this would be a face to face summit, but we cannot get away from the fact about this little beast. And you're going to see this little beast referred to uh, in via various uh, presenters today. So what I thought I would do is just walk you through a little bit of the journey of the UK industry. However, I'm very, very aware that we have quite a mixed audience today. If I, uh, I was doing my homework last night and there's about 270 people um, signed up for the conference today. And what's striking to me is we, we, we probably have about 15, 20 percent of participants who are not in the UK. But I think a lot of what we will talk about travels and also very interesting we have a lot more of a senior um, sort of breakdown there. I think um, several seven or eight country managers or general managers. And that just goes to show how important this beast has uh, accelerated the, uh, you know, the power or the um, size of this channel. So let's just go back six months and have a think about the journey we've all had to go through. I mean, who would have thought if you'd asked anybody at the beginning of this year that some of the biggest players in the grocery online industry would have shut their doors or you know really would have limited people coming through the doors but the brutal reality is this is what had to happen because um, of the huge influx of demand coming towards the uh, this channel clearly driven behind the scenes by government and trying to help everybody make sure they could still eat um, uh, you know be stocked up at home but then Everybody reacted and, you know, this is a great industry. Um, it's the I think it's the biggest private sector employer in the UK and probably in many other markets as well. And, you know, everybody rose to the challenge, both on the uh, manufacturer side, but in particular on the retailer side. And we saw huge amounts of innovation literally coming by the day. Um, so queuing functions, trying to smooth delivery. You know, if you don't need it urgently, can, can you wait a few days, please? Uh, and an example there at the top in terms of could you come to the physical store if you're physically able to reserve the you know the delivery slots for those who are, who are most vulnerable so you know in, in retrospect when the book is written about this pandemic I think the industry rose really well to the challenge in, in, in some but then we've seen things evolve from there and we're starting to see more permanent changes. Uh, we know that to change a habit is anywhere between five or six shops or maybe 60 or 70 days. And what we're now moving into is people making the, the channel switch permanent. So, you know, who would have thought Tesco 16,000 drive uh, you know jobs a uh, reward uh, you know to staff up on, on their function um you know iceland i think the end numbers were a lot bigger than the 250 percent when we pulled it out in you know february when we look at this and all sorts of innovation happening for consumer facing solutions 
And here's another way of looking at it. This is all public domain information and it's very finger in the air and I'm sure I got a couple of the numbers wrong here, but it gives you the order of magnitude and the direction of travel of how the UK industry has, has evolved from a capacity of about 2 million predominantly delivery, although some collection slots a week uh, at the end of February, we're now on track to, I mean, depending how things go, maybe go through 5 million weekly slots by Christmas time. And I'm seeing exactly the same in my business in, in other markets, such as Sweden or France or Italy. So, you know, this is a structural change that has been accelerated by the pandemic. You know, we've all seen the, the headlines about three years progression in three months. Um, you know, this is another way of showing how it's been baked in and made permanent. But also we see other bits of innovation that you know fit with that. So on, on the left hand side is um, something that Tesco already publicly talked about a year or two ago, which was taking some of its largest stores and starting to cut them in half uh, and having a, a, a condensed shopper experience. But in the other half of the uh, space, using that as a, as a mini urban fulfillment center. And you know, here's their CIO talking last month, I think, about um, having you know 10 um, scheduled to go live next next year um, with, uh, you know, one now open. So, you know, we see um, all sorts of innovation there. But we also see lots of other players moving. So Amazon have retrenched uh, on Pantry. They've now exited their Pantry proposition in Europe, and they're now doubling down on Fresh and, and Prime now. And we can see a lot of geographical expansion um, in, in the UK, and I suspect in other markets, uh, if it's not there already, it will be coming. But also very interesting has been watching the limited assortment discounters. You know, they've been dabbling and we know behind the scenes they've had various trials and options on wine and non-food and furniture. But look how quickly they've now pivoted, either say with the, the Lidl using third party people like Buy Me to uh, pick and uh, in store on their behalf and deliver, um, to how do you now <clears throat> piloting, you know, click and collect pilots in certain stores. So we're seeing a richness in innovation and change as, you know, shopper habits are changing dramatically. What's also interesting is behind the scenes. If you look at the shopper drivers for e-commerce, you'll see that a, a lot of them are actually supply chain based. Um, you know, can I get the product when I want it? Do they have collection slots when I want them? Do they have a wide assortment? And behind the scenes, you can see a lot of capital being deployed in all sorts of areas. So. You know, one expanding area is is indeed warehousing to support um, e-commerce operations. Wink Canton, who's a, who's a big logistics player there, they're talking about, you know, selling off their traditional um, um, operation and focusing on e-commerce. And then we see the last mile for the delivery players are looking at vehicles, you know, as the trialing in the UK, uh, so some electric vans. But I think I put the Amazon van in there because uh, although it hasn't hit the UK yet, uh, they're talking about um, procuring 100,000 electric vans over, I think, the next um, uh, three to four years. With, with I think it's an Indi Indian company called Rivan. So, you know, huge amounts of capital being deployed behind the scenes. And these, for me, are reasons to believe that the channel is going to stick. So what are we going to cover this morning? Um, we've got a rich um, a mixture of uh, retailer and uh, service provider and manufacturer talks. We're going to talk about, we're going to kick off with the co-op and we're going to talk about what it's like to work in a fast moving UK uh, retailer who's found a, neat, a very interesting niche actually in, in, in terms of um, leveraging commerce. Um, we're going to talk about a big FMCG player, uh, you know, how you integrate and how, how you make sure you get the best out of the new landscape. We're going to talk about um, what best in class looks like in terms of engaging together as a retailer and uh, uh, as a manufacturer. We're going to start looking a little bit at, about online offline. You know, the world is complex now. Sometimes what you do online has an unintended consequence offline. And sometimes that's a good unintended consequence. We're going to talk about ROI. We're going to talk about new business models. And we're going to have a good panel discussion with a good cross section of, uh, I think, manufacturer and uh, uh, a retailer presence. Then after lunch, uh, well, there'll be some uh, breakouts with the uh, the service providers. Uh, it's, it's actually quite interesting. I think there's about 20 sessions in total, and I was. 
looking could I sign up to them and I, I think there was about 15 or 16 I found interesting so so clearly that's not going to work today but um, you know there's a richness of, uh, of round tables there uh, we're also going to have a look at some learning some further afield from the UK um, we can have a, a focus on Amazon because we all know that, that that's a big beast uh, and we're going to have a little bit of a glimpse at the end in terms of what the future might look like so you know, a good um, cross section of uh, speakers, seniorities, backgrounds, histories. Um, so we're quite excited um, to, um, you know, have a good uh, interactive day today. So enjoy the day. Uh, we're we're going to start over and hand over in a minute to the next speaker. But as you know, Sarah and um, Katie said, please do interact. Please ask your questions. You know, as facilitate. You know, think of us as facilitators. Give us good questions, and we'll ask them. And you know, let's maximise the value for all of you participants today. So uh, with that, enjoy the day, and over to Katie to introduce the first um, speakers. <laughs>